Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Now, Newton and Galileo, between them, I know they lived at different times, but they're basically, they're, they worked in similar fields. And uh, Galileo was all about friction. And what we have from this idea of friction um, is that it is an opposing force against someone, something that has momentum and inertia. So, okay, you can have air resistance or friction uh, or just another force, something or someone pushing back on something that has momentum and inertia. Fine, no problem. Along a horizontal plane, that is fine. You push something along and uh, it uh, experiences resistance. And of course, if you carry that line of thinking over to there being no resistance, whether there is no friction from the ground or the air, uh, and you, you in a vacuum, as it were, then yes, you can perceive that uh, something pushed along uh, will um, just carry on uh, on its line of trajectory with no resistance. Fine, no issue there. But of course, um, that idea has been carried over to the idea that we can uh, escape um, the Earth's atmosphere and its gravity uh, and eventually find um, space, a vacuum, where that would be possible. And of course that's what all the whole satellite thing is based on. This acceptance of the theory that uh, once something is in motion and it faces no resistance, then it will just carry on forever. And of course then you have the idea that planets and their gravity will pull things around and, and, and send them off in different directions. And that's why they don't consider using jets to change the direction or thrusters to change the direction of a satellite or something that's heading off into outer space because they know they can't. They can't, you, you can't have a rocket or a jet uh, they're pushing out and reacting against nothing to make it move. All right, so that's, that's why they don't include thrusters on the idea of satellites. Um, so, now, this being pushed along or resisting uh, forces uh, along a horizontal plane is fine. But when it comes to up and down, we have a, many more choices available to us. We can go up in a rocket uh, very, very fast uh, and say, said to be resisting gravity or uh, working against gravity or, or uh, defying gravity. However, you can also use a helium balloon to go up into the air. And of course that then applies, the, the laws of density then apply to that scenario, not gravity. And of course, people who want to argue about it will say, yes, but you still need an up and down, and that must be gravity. <coughs> now, again, it's just got to be pointed out that once you realize that the ball earth and the gravity uh, perceived to keep us sticking to the ball earth uh, is essential uh, in a mathematical scenario, but that is not necessarily reality. We come to the point where we realize that we don't actually know if um, the whole idea of the spinning ball and gravity keeping us on is just a theory and hasn't been actually proven, then of course what we're left with is other theories. So, you know, you can't demand proof of no gravity when the whole idea of gravity because we're on a spinning ball is fabricated anyway. The truth is, nobody knows exactly how or why it works, but again, we come back down to intelligent design, where if you're going to have somewhere that needs to support life, then of course it must be grounded. You, we can't just be floating around aimlessly. And as far as we know, floating in space is all just falling, okay? So as I keep saying, we are at an equilibrium 
when we step into water, we're at an equilibrium with water. We step out of water and we are in the uh, uh, medium of air. So we are then faced with us being much more denser than the air, so we fall down through the air. It is maybe the air that is pulling us down, or the air pressure, not a particular force pulling us down from the earth. As soon as you get into water, things stop pulling you down. There is no force uh, acting on you. And of course, then you have to say that, well, water has a buoyant force resisting or defying gravity. No, it's just an equilibrium. A balance is reached between the density of the object and the density of the medium with which it is in. Anything earthbound, that's all it requires. So, back to this whole thing about up and down being different to the, or the vertical being different to the horizontal, okay? It is accepted that uh, going along a horizontal axis, we need some kind of force to push something along and then other forces will uh, resist that, okay? Fine, but going up and down, we can simply change our density just like a fish does in water to go up and down in the medium of air. So what uh, Galileo, uh, Galileo and Newton did was they observed these forces and inertia and momentum on a horizontal plane but in order for them to try and say we have the answers to how uh, life, the universe, and everything works, and that's based on the principles of pushing things along the ground and just uh, transferring those principles to the up and down. But then, you see, it's different, isn't it? You cannot use um, a lighter gas to make you go forwards, backwards, or sideways, yeah? you changing the density of an object uh, that is going to be going along a horizontal plane does not make it suddenly go along that horizontal plane. So yes, up and down and going along a horizontal plane are different. So it is a falsehood to try to make this connection with um, the physics that makes things go along a horizontal plane and then connect that to um, things going up and down a vertical plane. It's different physics. Galileo and Newton tried to connect the physical properties of things going along a horizontal plane with things going up and down on a vertical plane so that they could then say how and why uh, we are on a spinning ball and we stick to it. All right? That's what you've got to do in your head first, okay? Anyone who wants to come along and argue about gravity being a necessity to keep us on the ground, flat plane, plane or otherwise, first of all, you have to detach, you have to understand that um, a false connection has been made between things, objects on a horizontal plane and the physics of objects on a vertical plane. They're different. They don't work the same. How and why? comes down to the fact that we just have to have a, an up and down in order for us to exist. And that's what Flat Earthers are doing. They're exploring all these different ways and ideas and concepts. And besides, you know, you imagine that the ball Earth is spinning around in the vacuum of space. Well, again, it's just a theory based on Galileo's notions that uh, something uh, with inertia and momentum, uh, if it doesn't face resistance, then it will carry on forever. So that's what the uh, heliocentric model is based upon, but uh, that doesn't mean it's necessarily true, especially when it's quite clear that um, the space agencies haven't managed to get beyond the Earth's uh, atmosphere or gravity. And you ask someone what uh, uh, where is the limit of the gravity or the atmosphere of the Earth? 
No one can tell you. They tell you that, well, Earth's gravity goes on forever. Well, if it goes on forever, then nothing can ever escape it. And we are lumped with that. We have to deal with it, accept it, and uh, we can base the rest of our uh, life thinking and theories and beliefs on this idea that we are stuck here in this physical existence. Doesn't mean it's a prism, prison, it just means that we are here for the duration of our physical existence and the idea is to try and uh, get back that connection with our eternal spirit. Thank you very much.